What's up YouTube? I'm trying this again for like the third time because my phone keeps overheating. Anyways, it's just uh, Sunday here dinking around on some trucks. But um, what I'm doing here is responding to a comment on my YouTube about um, when did the diesel trucks start to go downhill. And it's kind of a broad question. It's fairly opinion based. And you kind of got to figure out what down, what the downhill is, what's better, worse now, or what was better then. Um, anyways, the uh, let's just start. Let's just go with kind of reliability. What what? Um, why are trucks less reliable now, or seem to be, than they used to be? And it really just goes back to emissions. Emissions. It's not bad. I don't think there's anything. I mean, it's it's bad, and I think there's a bit of an overreach happening with it. Um, you know, that it's not. There's a point where the diff, that you're not going to make as much of a difference as you they want to, maybe. But at the end of the day, I'm I'm fine with equipment that doesn't uh, cold smoke as much and doesn't blow black smoke all the time. And um, as long as the power is there, it doesn't make any difference to me. Even though it is kind of fun to blow a little black smoke on the old truck sometimes, you know. But um, anyways. Why did um, why did trucks become less reliable? We'll start with the original ones that everybody compares to: the 12 valve, the 73 Power Stroke, and the big truck worlds N14, 60 Series, A model Cats, 855 Cummins. Um, you know, all those. It seemed like you changed the oil on them, and you ran an overhead, and you just ran them, and you didn't do anything to them forever and ever and ever. Um, that is because that was when Let's, um, all of our years of technology of diesel engines had come up uh, with no emissions. We were solely working on reliability and performance. We peaked there, and then the EPA said, hey, wait a minute, that's putting out too much NOx, so you need to turn it down. And we're going to give you three years to figure it out. If you don't, you can't sell your stuff. And so we went from 2001, which was like no emissions, the seven threes and stuff, um, or very limited emissions, pretty much if don't blow too much smoke, you'd be okay. And then we hit uh, the famous one, let's talk about the six liters. Everybody likes to get after the six liters. Why the six liters were so problematic and so frustrating for people. Um, the EGR mostly. The EGR, uh, and it was the first EGR engine on the market. It was the first variable vein engine on the market. Um, and there were some flaws in that style Huey system coming from the 7.3. The 6.0-liter Huey system had way more joints in it, and it was more problematic without a doubt. But um, the world had never seen an EGR. Mechanics didn't know what to do with an EGR. They didn't understand what it did. They didn't understand what it looks like when it broke. And there were tons and tons and tons of head gaskets and engines replaced solely over poor diagnostics of an EGR failure. And you can take that to the bank. I would put money on that less than half of the 6-liter head gasket jobs that have been done uh, were done when they didn't need to be. They just needed an EGR. But people are dumb. There's a lot of mechanics that are dumb. And sometimes I'm a dumb mechanic too. And so I'm not going to sit out here and ruin anybody's day over it. So we've got that. We've got, we go from the 7.3 and then they say by 2004 you need to get your emissions down. And then the horsepower race is on. So everybody's trying to get their power up at the same time. So we're fighting two engineering features here where we're cranking over 600 foot-pounds out of an engine, a 6-liter, which is less than 400 and, what, I don't know, what is a 6-liter? Is that 400 cubes? My, my European to American conversions in my noggin is subpar. Um, and so we've got that happen. And then they say, oh, then we get four years of the 6-liter, and then we hit tier uh, three, tier four interim. Tier three was six liter and Duramax stuff and uh, Common Rail 5.9, we hit the 6.7 Cummins, uh, the 6.4 Power Stroke and the LMM Duramax maybe. I'm not that great with the, with the, L, the Duramax abbreviations either. Um, we hit tier four interim, which was zero smoke and I can't remember the NOx output, it was minimal. Um, Anyways, and so then they gave us, they pretty much gave the industry a couple years to engineer that, and it never got tested. Uh, it got put right into production, and the way you went. <clears throat> and then the same thing with semi-trucks. We go from almost no emissions, and then over the course, we just go 2000 to 2010, 
emission standards change drastically and the, they have fuel uh, fuel mileage mandates they have to meet and they have to meet uh, NOx output and they never got time to field test. We were the field testers, the consumers, and so we got to pay we got to pay for their education. And so the reason why it seems like our brand new stuff is really doing pretty good. Like we're starting to see emissions intact semis go three quarters of a million. It'd be hard to say a million uh, emissions intact, but it, it's happening, but it's not happening as cheaply as it used to be. The emission system is it's a service system. It's expensive to maintain, it's expensive to repair, and what it can't handle is a is any engine wear pretty much outside of new spec. In the old days, when your engine that didn't have a DPF or an SCR on it or an EGR got a little wear on it, you had a little blow by, but that engine could live a very long time like that. Your emissions components cannot handle that burning oil. They plug fast and it becomes a nightmare from there. So that's what makes everybody rebuild their engines sooner. Um, so that, that that's problem. That's a problem that we run into. I'm, I, I, I'm trying to stay on track here. Give me a second. Let me, let me skip back. So we've got two, tier four interim, 2008, 2010. Six, four power stroke, same deal. That thing had no field testing. Throw it in the field and away you go. Um, Detroit, the DD15 series was the most expensive engine development. It was like $3 billion they spent developing that engine. And it did them well. It's mostly a Mercedes-Benz engine. Um, but that's a pretty good engine. It is what it is. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're aftermarket, or not aftermarket, but used trucks. The, D, the DD is worth way more than like the Packers and stuff. The Packers can, can be a problem child. But um, either way... So then we got two years of Tier 4 interim, then we hit Tier 4 final. And that was supposed to be the last of it, right? And so we haven't had any, any emissions changes from 2010 to 2024 now. Um, we were, got pretty good through those early years. Consumers paid for the testing, and nobody had a good time, but the manufacturers learned and, and moved on, and, and, and we were winning. And we're doing better now than we were as far as reliability goes. However... Um, what it what is tough to recreate is the parts of the mechanical engine is they're cheaper the tolerances are not near as stringent um, you don't have the emission stuff you don't have a DPF you don't have an SCR you don't have a DEF pump DEF heater DEF tank DEF lines um, no EGR um, and all that stuff to deal with and so your maintenance is just less but power is up on the new engines power is up fuel mileage is pretty good and, and pretty good it's hard to it's pretty hard to, to, to you know like everybody's oh, the 12 valve Cummins got 20 miles a gallon like well yeah it was 215 horse turn your new new truck down 215 horse it'll get 25 but nobody does it everybody wants their 500 horse out of their pickup now so um so at 2013, the guy that, that kind of got this going, he said he was looking at a 2013 Duramax. Pretty good engine besides the the CP4. Same thing, we emissions. We get into bumping up the rail pressure to make a more precise injector pulse happen. Um, it, you know, you're trying to hold, you're running all day hot diesel fuel that they've also taken the oil out of for emissions. And you're using that as a lubrication in your in your CP4. I've got a blown up one in the shop I keep just for showing off. It's a terrible design. Yeah, well, but anyways, your 13 will have a CP4. It's going to go out. GM has the worst supporting fuel system, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about why the new trucks are less reliable and or cost more to have. And it's simply because the parts are more because we've got injectors that are firing four times for for compression stroke in some instances instead of one, but that's why they're quieter. And do you want the cheap or do you want the loud? And so, or the quiet, you know, and so you go back and forth there. So we, we want we want a little bit on there, a little quieter and cleaner to be around, but they're more expensive to keep up. And <clears throat> why? So we, we, we've got that, and then we've got, um, same deal, we've got power. Power's way up. You... The transmissions are better, and the axles are better, and the brakes are better, and 
Boy, the cabins are nice. These new pickups are like riding in a car, a Cadillac even, and it's crazy. But um, so yeah, you go back and forth, and that's part of why the trucks are expensive. Every freaking truck on the roads a goddamn luxury pickup drives me nuts. You know, and these people, why is my truck eighty grand? Like, quit buying a freaking land yacht to go go to work with. These leather seats, you look at the option. I think I looked at them on an option on Ford. It's like freaking six or seven grand for leather seats, you know. And I, I could care less. I bought a brand new truck with leather seats once and I paranoid me. Somebody wanted it worse than I did, so I sold it. Um, but, anyways, I don't know if this helps. It's hard for me to keep my train of thought running right up the middle on why. It's kind of a roundabout answer. There's a lot of information, so it's going to be up to you to decide whether we're headed downhill or not. Um, but anyway, so we've got EGRs on everything. And most people, let's let's jump back to EGRs a little bit. It's another part we didn't have back then. We didn't have to deal with it. We didn't have to fix it. We didn't have to do anything. We just ran them because they didn't have that problem. Why did they use an EGR? This is something I actually came to fully understand most recently from a friend of mine that that helps me out and uh egrs they're using the inert gas out of the exhaust to control the burn because they've advanced the timing so far to make sure they burn as much as they can in the piston in the cylinder that they actually moderate that inert gas intake to help control the burn and so they can they can have more control over fueling and, and emissions output it's not just they're not they don't care about reburning the exhaust they just need the inert gas it's a cheap free way to get inert gas to screw with your burn right and so and it keeps the combustion temperatures down and so that's why a lot of times in deletes in, in correctable deletes there's some engines that can't handle an egr delete well your heat goes up and you crack heads and you do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, so, and that's why, so that then we get the re-entry of exhaust carbon as a byproduct of using the inert gas out of the exhaust. So that was no fun. But um, there's a lot of different things going on. There's just, there's just more parts. And the new, in my opinion, the brand new stuff is better than it's ever, ever been for the last... 20 years um it makes good power the horsepower is there um you know the the diagnostics the self-diagnostics and the ecms is way better they're e if you have the software they're easier to diagnose you hit that mid 2000s range and, and all these i call them learning years i tell people this all the time i wouldn't own anything any diesel engine in any any a skid steer, a semi truck, a John Deere tractor, I don't care. I, if it was built from 2000 and late 2007 to 2012 or 13, I don't want it. Emission standards change so much for those few years that it, it, like I said before, the consumer did all the field testing and we paid for it. And so they, 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 did, they had to keep production out to stay in business. And so they turned out stuff they really knew almost nothing about. They didn't know how it was going to handle the real world. And that's what we got. So there's a long, very long answer to your simple question. And I hope this helps. And thanks for watching. And let me know if there's anything else you guys want to see. You guys want to see more trucking content, mechanicing content, getting stuck content, any of it. I'm... I'm we got all kinds of stuff going on here. I just never think to record because this is this is so not my second nature to video stuff, but people seem to like it. So here we are. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Tell me what I can do better and different, and see you on the next one.